can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around for another guest. Well, who else do you know? I invited Mel Price. Mary, I'm surprised at you being so insecure. You have to butter up the station manager by having him to dinner. Ed. I'll get it. <laughs> Mel, we were worried sick about you. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Mary. Hi, Lou. Hi. 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 I'm sorry. I'm late. There was a little pro pro problem at the station. <laughs> Mort Lockwood just walked out. Suddenly find myself with an hour of variety programming to fill. Oh, my God. Ted, aren't you taking it awfully hard? Well, the poor man. He wakes up this morning like any other day, and he has to fill a whole hour of programming. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to get anybody else in a hurry. <laughs> Ted, are you suggesting that you can uh, hand ha handle this show? Well, it hadn't occurred to me, but it's a darn good notion. <laughs> you don't understand, uh, Ted. This is not just a news show. It needs an entertainer. <laughs> hey, guys, he thinks I'm not an entertainer. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's this? Mary, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a large blindfold? Gee, I'm sorry, Ted. All my blindfolds are in the wash. <laughs> what a napkin do? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> this is a little something George Hitt and I worked up as an act for a church benefit. Come on, everybody, inside. <laughs> okay, take it, George Hitt. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted is going to demonstrate mental powers you never knew he had. <laughs> What's you gonna do, come in out of the rain? <laughs> As I pass among you, I'm going to ask each one for an object which the amazing Theodore, completely blindfolded, will correctly identify just by reading my mind. Ready, Teddy? Ready! <laughs> I'm holding an object, Ted, and thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I'm getting very strong waves. Ted, get the lead out and let's come to the point. <laughs> Aha! I think I have it. You're holding a pencil. The amazing Theodore! <laughs> what am I holding now, Ted? Don't blow it. <laughs> You're holding a trumpet. <laughs> Who would be carrying a trumpet? A trombone. <laughs> Think carefully, Ted. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what? That um, this is nothing to sneeze at. Ah, I'm getting very strong waves. No more hanky panky, Ted. I'm getting very, very strong waves. <laughs> Ted, what I'm holding is made of cloth, and you squeeze it with your fingers, and you blow into it. It's a bagpipe! <laughs> you big palooka, we don't have a finger for a bagpipe! Okay. <laughs> but I think you did very well, don't you? Oh. 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 Weren't they unbelievable, Mary? Unbelievable. The way they work with each other, the ten ten tenderness, the, the innocent charm. <laughs> When was the last time you heard anybody called a palooka? <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. I think he's a nice palooka. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And, and, and it shows. In fact, I think the two of you are the uh, cutest uh, uh, husband and wife team I've seen in years. How'd you like to turn pro? Great idea. And you won't even have to give up the news show. Oh. <laughs> 
I just think that a uh, huh, huh, husband and wife team could add a whole, whole, whole new element to that show. You said a mouthful there. Of course, it took you a little longer than most people, but it was worth waiting for. <laughs> Your opening show. Well, it's just an audition, Mary. If we blow it, it's also our closing show. No. Ah, oh, you won't blow it. Where's Ted? Talking to the choreographer. The choreographer? I didn't know the show was going to have dancing. Well, it wasn't. It was Ted's idea. He wants a big production number on every show. But how can you have a production number? There's just you, Ted, and one guest. I know. I hope the bishop can dance. <laughs> Hey, Lou, Mary. Hi, hey, I had no idea show business was so exciting. Uh -huh. The station's really giving us the big star treatment. You know, we just left the dressing room. There's a 12-year-old bottle of scotch and a bouquet of roses. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe next week there'll be something for you, Georgette. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know the best thing of all? They gave me a flunky. A flunky? Well, yeah, you know, starting need someone to do errands for them. Uh, Elliot, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> this is my flunky. <laughs> Give him some pictures. <laughs> I have one, Elliot. Come on, Dad, let's get oh, started. Okay, if you want those autographed, Elliot can do that too. Make them personal. They're close friends. <laughs> Wish him luck. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good yeah. luck. A lot of luck. Thanks. Gee, this is exciting. It's, it's like being at Los Alamos. <laughs> Los Alamos. <laughs> Birthplace of the biggest bomb in history. Oh, well, here we go. Any predictions? Yeah, that should shorten the war by at least two years. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to Tonight in Town. And here are tonight's guest hosts, Ted and Georgette Baxter. Hello, hello. Hooray, hooray. I'm Ted. And I'm Georgette. Don't touch that dial. Don't go away. You ain't seen... Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking A-bomb, Mary. We're talking H-bomb. That was cute. Huh? That was pretty cute. I, well, I wouldn't want to see it often, but it was cute. Well, here we are, Teddy Bear, on our very own show. Live from Minneapolis. And I'd like to say hello to all my friends out there. And if it's okay, I'd like to say hello to our children. Hi, David. Hi, Mary Lou. And I'd like to say a word to our babysitter. I'm not paying you a buck an hour to watch television. He's only kidding. Don't pay attention to this big dog. They really are cute, little Luke. Uh, adorable. <laughs> well, Mary, I think I'll go now. I'll see you in the office tomorrow. No, Mr. Grant, you've got to watch the rest of the show. Oh, that's okay. I've gotten the flavor of it. A real friend would stay for the whole show. And now it's time for our first commercial. But don't go away, everybody. As soon as we get back, the amazing Theodore, that's Teddy, is going to show us his incredible mind-reading ability. <laughs> okay, let's go. This part of the program is brought to you by Bowser Banquet, the doggy food that every dog loves. Yes, sir. You just watch Happy here gobble up her Bowser banquet. <laughs> okay, come and get it. <laughs> come on, puppy. Here you are, Anna girl. It's all for you. It's all yours. Go ahead, gobble it up. <laughs> Choo-choo. <laughs> okay. Here comes the choo-choo. Please. <laughs> well, I guess you forgot about playing choo-choo. <laughs> Did you want to grow up to be a great Dane? <laughs> Come on, it's really good for you. I'll show you how good it is. I'll taste it for you. <laughs> Look, I gotta ask you something. Uh, you were a crime reporter. Yeah. I mean, you, you've seen appalling things. Yeah. Nothing ghastly shocks you. Mm. 
So I, would you explain why... The success of the Ted and Georgette show. <laughs> exactly. Now, they've been on almost two weeks, Lou, and, mm -hmm. uh, well, their ratings are higher than ever. Uh, now, why do people watch that stuff, <laughs> Lou? It's so, it's so ordinary. Mm -hmm. now, you got the dumb talent hunt, you got the beautiful baby contest. Oh, <laughs> you know who the big guests were yesterday? Mm. A couple celebrating the third wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lou, where did they find those guests? I mean, they're so dull. The night watchman and the dry cleaners. <laughs> you know, it's like they make dull a requirement to get on the show. Go figure it out, Murray. Who with any intelligence would want to be on a show like that? <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? what? I'm going to be a guest on the Ted and Georgette show next week. <laughs> We were, uh, we were just, uh, we were just asking, uh, where do Ted and Georgette get their talent? And you just strolled right on in. Oh, yeah. right at that instant. Yeah, that, that very instant. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what are you going to do on the show, Mary? I think they probably want to ask me some questions about producing a new show. Mm -hmm. Of course, they want a light touch, too. Yeah. So I thought of an opening joke. You gonna tell an opening joke? Yeah, yeah, and, and I wanna try it out on you because I don't wanna use it unless it's very funny. Oh, okay. Okay, so I thought I would say, um, I'm very glad to be here tonight. Of course, the way my cabbie drove, I'd be glad to be anywhere. <laughs> is it very funny? I guess it is. I think it's funny. I knew it was! <laughs> Can I have Elliot get anybody a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Cream and sugar. I thought you uh, drank it black. Well, I do, but I'm training him to handle a little more responsibility. <laughs> well, enough chit-chat, I'm a busy man. Mary, the baseball player who had scheduled for tonight fell out. But he wants you to fill in for him. Uh, me? me? T tonight? What are you going to be on next week anyway? What's the difference? But, Ted, it's so, so sudden. I mean, I don't have time to prepare for it. <laughs> What's to prepare? It's an interview. We ask you how the news is done, and you tell us. Yeah, it's about time Ted found out anyhow. <laughs> if you're a pro, you can be ready at a moment's notice. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm right, I'm right. Well, Mary, what do you say? Time is money. Can you get yourself ready in a couple of hours? No. Yes. I guess. I don't. All right, fine, fine. It's settled. Ooh, I've got to go. I've got to check those sets. Say goodbye for me. I don't have time. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Listen, I'm not going to be on the show next week. I'm going to be on tonight. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards. Bye-bye. Georgette, hi. Oh, I am so excited. I'm going to be on the show tonight. I mean, I'm not even sure I'll know what to say, but I am really excited. <sighs> Me too, Mary. I'm thrilled to death. Good. <laughs> I don't want to do the show anymore. Why not? I don't enjoy it. I spend all day at the studio. I never see my children. I never get to cook a meal. I never get to do anything in my own house. And I miss doing those things, Mary. Maybe it's dumb. No, Georgia, that's not dumb. I never wanted to be a performer. I just did it because Ted wanted me to. Now the show's a hit, and I can't get out of it, and I want my old life back. Oh, Mary, can you understand that? Of course I can. Am I being unreasonable? Of course you're not. Does it make any sense at all? Sure it does. Damn right. <laughs> George, Ed, why don't you just go to Ted and tell him you don't want to do the show anymore? Because it means so much to him. He would break his heart if he had to give it up. But, Georgette, you've got to think of yourself, too. You can't go through life unhappy. I mean, there's no point in being a martyr. I guess you're right, Mary. I have to talk to Ted. But I want to find the right moment. I think I'll wait till tonight when we're alone together in bed, and then I'll tell him I don't want to anymore. And when he finds out that I mean the show, he'll be so relieved he'll agree to anything. <laughs> Thank you for your nice letter. It's always nice to hear from a fan. I can't honor your request for tickets, 
but I am enclosing an autographed picture. And how shall I sign that? Your loving son, Ted. <laughs> Oh, hi, honey. How's Mary? Oh, she's a little nervous, but she'll be fine. Ah, sure she will. Am I right? You're right. <laughs> when I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> we have such a bright future, Georgia. Right, dear. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Nothing. Yes, there is. But a guy's married as long as I have, he gets to spot those little clues. <laughs> Well, you'd find out what's the matter. Ted, you and I will talk about it when we're alone. We are alone. Oh, oh, okay, that's, that's enough. Thanks a lot. I mean, let's face it, how can you improve on God's handiwork? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, what's bothering you? We're still not alone, Ted. Sorry, Elliot. Would you, would you excuse me? Certainly, Mr. Baxter. Anything you say? Ted, I want to talk to you about the show. I don't want to do it now, but I think we should sit down and have a serious talk afterward. Why can't we talk about it now? It's too close to air time. So? It might upset you. Hey, you're talking to Ted Baxter, the professional's professional. I don't get upset by things. Well, you might. Nothing you could say to me could affect my performance out there. That's not true. Remember the time Murray told you just before the news that Lassie was three different dogs? And you had to have ice pressed against the back of your neck before you could go on? Hey, Georgia, if there's something you want to talk about, let's talk. All right. Ted, I don't want to do the show anymore. I tried. I really tried. But I'm really not happy. <laughs> oh, Georgette, that's out of the question. We're a big hit. We've got to do the show, and that's all there's to it. All right, Ted, if that's what you really want. Hey. You know, Teddy Bear doesn't like to see his Georgette looking sad. Come on now, let me see your nice, big, happy face. There, that's better. <laughs> How can you do this to me, Georgette? Right in the middle of a successful show. Okay, everybody, here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Live from Minneapolis, here are Ted and Georgette Baxter. Hello, hello. Hooray, hooray. I'm Ted. And I'm Georgette. Don't touch that dial. Don't go away. You ain't seen. Nothing yet. <laughs> you tell everybody about tonight's guest, honey? Uh, Mary Richards, the producer of the 6 o'clock news. We'll be back with our guest right after these messages. Ted, I can't do it. I tried. I gave it all I had, but I just can't do it. I'm sorry for letting me back. Hey, wait a minute. Georgette. 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 Ted? Five seconds. Ted? Four. Three. Two. One! <laughs> you know, I'm uh, sure that any people who are watching must be wondering why I'm here alone. And, uh, and, and I, I know that people usually enjoy behind the scene stuff. And the, the reason that I'm here alone is because uh, Ted and Georgette aren't here. But I, th I think that they'll be back shortly, if there's a God in heaven. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, produce the six o'clock news, and, I, and I'm sure that they, uh, they plan to ask me uh, a lot of questions about, about that. Uh, uh, like, um, how long have I been producing the news? Seven years. <laughs> 
do, do I enjoy it? Sure do. <laughs> well, what, what exactly uh, does a producer do? <laughs> oh, boy, you name it. <laughs> uh, well, okay, okay, okay. One of the uh, things that I do is uh, setting the whole lineup for the show, seeing, you know, how many commercials we have and when, um, when they come in, in the show. Like, uh, when, when, when's the next commercial in this show? <laughs> 17 minutes? <laughs> It won't work, kid. Please, you can do this alone. No, I can't. I checked. You want the both of us on the show. What would it be like without you? Hello, hello. I'm Ted. Don't touch that dial. You ain't seen. <laughs> I need you, honey. I'm sorry, Ted, but I can't help it. Why does it just seem more important to me to raise the children than to do the show? I mean, what do you think? I wouldn't want to change diapers and scrub the floor? I mean, somebody's got to put on makeup and sit in the spotlight. Ted, one of us has got to make a big sacrifice. Oh, gee. Why does it always have to be you? <laughs> that question that everybody wants an answer to. What do I do after I check the promo log? <laughs> well, I'd like to answer that question, but I'm afraid I don't have any time. Oh, I do have time. <laughs> Ted, I can't do it. This is very important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. All right, I'll give it up. I'll give oh. it up. <laughs> I'll give up the fame. I'll give up the money. But can I ask one thing of you in return? Sure. Can I keep Elliot? <laughs> Sometimes there's some film to, to look at, and, and then I brown bag it in the screening room. Uh, am I getting too technical? Oh, it's time for a commercial already. Okay, I'm sure George, uh, Jed and Ted will be back soon, so don't go away. Back in 30 seconds. I can't. I just can't. Keep can't. doing can't. what you're doing. I can't do it. I can't. Do it. I can't. Well, what's wrong, Miss Major Richards? You have no idea how lonely it is up there. Yeah? Try being a messenger boy for Howard Hughes. You were a messenger boy for Howard Hughes? Yeah, for three years. Nobody ever let me talk. All I did all day was listen, listen, listen. Elliot, come sit down. We're going to give you a chance to talk. <laughs> Isn't it always the way just when you give up hope? OK, guys, come on, let's move it. Let's get those cameras rolling. We've got a show to do here. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> My next guest is Elliot. <laughs> Elliot, what were you just telling me your job was for three years? Errand boy for Howard Hughes. <laughs> ah. Then did you actually meet Mr. Hughes and get to speak with him? Oh, yeah, lots of times. Well, then I imagine you have many stories to tell us about Mr. Hughes's last years. Well, about a million or two, that's all. <laughs> okay. Why don't you just tell us some of the things you used to do for him? Well, uh, one of the things I did was I, I used to make him snacks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, one of his favorites was this very special peach melba I used to make for him. Uh -huh. yeah, it was a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top of a plain pound cake uh -huh. with fresh peaches <laughs> with a little bit of chocolate syrup. <laughs> oh, he used to really love that. <laughs> I don't blame him. I'd love some myself. <laughs> oh, all right, Miss Richards, I'll get you one. No, no, no. 